You can go ahead. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to January's virtual speaker presentation featuring guest speaker Paul Weber called The Songs and Stories from Ottawa's Past. My name is Sarazad Khan and I and Jacob Salim will be your hosts tonight. Before we, be we begin, let's take a moment to acknowledge whose land it is that we meet on tonight. For thousands of years before colonial times, the members of Indigenous communities traveled from far and wide to gather at the meeting of the Tree Rivers, the Ottawa, the Gatineau, and the Rideau, from the Saudi Air Falls to the mouth of the Gatineau River. The area is rich in natural resources, plants, animals, and fish and also provided a convenient place for trade and communication among communities. Of special significance are the burial places at Hull Landing and the Sodier Falls, a sacred place for meeting and sharing in ceremonies. The burial grounds in the Ottawa Gatineau Corridor, including Hull Landing, were important for rituals of respect and bonding with the landscape. Victoria Island, located under the Portas Bridge, continues to provide this sacred space to local and visiting Indigenous people. The National Capital Region, which includes the city of Ottawa, remains unceded Algonquin Anishinaabeg territory. We encourage our members and guests to reflect on this, our connected history, and ways we can contribute to re reconciliation. Next, we would like to extend our thanks to the City of Ottawa, the Province of Ontario, and last but never least, to our member set. Without your support, none of what the Historical Society of Ottawa does would be possible. In fact, if you would like to become a member of the Historical Society of Ottawa, I will be putting the link to do so in the chat box tonight. You can fill out the membership form online and pay via PayPal or download the form and mail it in to us, in with, to us with a check. Members receive a free of charge print copy of our current Bytown pamphlets alongside our quarterly newspaper. And they receive special pricings on our outings and our society sponsored books and activities. Membership dues are essential to us being able to offer these speaker series on Zoom and our in-person presentations free of charge. If you enjoy our speaker series or if you have a passion for Ottawa's history, I highly recommend becoming a member. The Historical Society of Ottawa has been telling Ottawa's great stories for 126 years, including now through our twice monthly speaker series. As you know, we currently run two separate parallel speaker series. In-person presentations are held in the Ottawa Public Library Auditorium. In addition, we bring our virtual presentations into the comfort of your home via Zoom as we are tonight. Our next in-person presentation taking place on Saturday, January 27th at 1 p.m. at the Ottawa Public Library Auditorium is Ottawa Soreline, Soreline built from gar garbage by guest speaker Dave Alston. And in February, we, we will welcome Black History Month with a virtual presentation by Dave Tulock on the history of Ottawa's Caribbean community. Which brings us to tonight's presentation. Before I introduce Paul, a reminder to everyone to kindly keep your settings on mute so as not to interfere with our speaker's presentation and turning off your video feed once we get going. It assists with the overall transmission as well. Tonight's presentation will be followed by a Q&A session. So dur during the presentation, please start typing in your great questions in the chat box. It is my honor to now introduce Paul Weber. Paul Weber is a bilingual, bilingual singer songwriter, guitarist, story storyteller, and videographer who has performed across Canada in various incarnations. His high energy live, live shows combine folk tunes with storytelling and video, all presented in a laid back humorous way. He is a people's poet of sorts, telling tales of past times, stories of the street and community struggles. 
He is concurrently recording a new CD, something about drag queens, beer trains, and hat pins. Maybe we'll hear about that later tonight. Over to you, Paul. Thank you very much to hear that. Can you hear me okay? Yes, good, we good. can. <laughs> right. Yes. It's great to be here tonight and uh, to tell some tales and play some songs about Ottawa, about Eastern Ontario, Western Quebec. I even get as far as Montreal occasionally. Um, and great to see a lot of uh, familiar names uh, in, the, uh, in the crowd out there. Uh, so people often ask me how I got started writing songs, these historical songs. And, and I should say that I, I also write about Ottawa today and Ottawa in the future, but this is the historical show. Uh, and I do have a lot of historical tunes. Um, but uh, it was interesting actually how I got started on this journey writing these tunes. Was I, I had been playing in a band and the band broke up and I was looking for kind of a new focus for what I was going to do. And I was visiting a friend's house and he said, you know, my dad just wrote a, a history book and it was lying on his coffee table and he said i'm probably never going to read it but maybe you want to look at it as a typical son i guess and i picked up this book i have it here the ottawa valley's great fire of 1870 and i read this book which you can get out of the library i believe and uh right away i started seeing images and like it was like a movie the whole thing felt like a movie to me it was so dramatic and I'd never heard of this fire. And then I realized no one's ever heard of this fire. Everyone's heard about when parliament burned down. They heard about when uh, all the timber burned along the uh, Ottawa river, but the great fire of 1870 is fairly unknown though. It was by far the largest fire that this area has ever known. It burned down a huge part of Eastern Ontario started out near Elmont, a bunch of railroad workers were burning some, uh, bush and the fire got out of control the winds were high the farming practices at that time um, had people piling huge masses of dry timber next to their homes which also wasn't particularly good so the whole area was ready for a fire the fire quickly got out of control i think it was up to 10 miles wide at one point in time 20 miles deep moving as fast as you could go on a horse coming towards Ottawa, got near Ottawa, and a bunch of fast-thinking mill workers got together, ran down to what is today Dow's Lake. There was a dam there called the St. Louis Dam. They broke that dam. It flooded the area from Dow's Lake all the way to the Ottawa River where um, Preston Street is today. And there's even stories of people swimming across at the last minute as this giant fire came down to Ottawa. The skies were black, as you can imagine. Um, and that plus the changing wind slowed that fire down. But then it crossed the river, burned all the way up to Wakefield, burned around Ottawa, burned back to Perth. So afterwards, a lot of uh, this part of Eastern Ontario was charred ruins for many years. And that's places like Bell's Corners and Stittsville. They were gone, just completely burned away. Anyway, all that to say, that inspired me to write the first song, uh, which is on my CD uh, called The Great Fire of 1870. It tells kind of a personal story, what it's been like for someone to live through that fire. And I'm also a videographer, so I decided I was going to make a video to uh, go with the song. And it's much more interesting than watching me to, for you to get to watch this video. And I had fun making the video. The video has sort of three different segments in it. Um, part of it is from a music video that I made about the Great Fire, uh, where we kind of acted out what it, the song was telling this story. We also went out to Elmont. There's an area called the Burnt Lands. There's a reason that it's called the Burnt Lands. Um, and we had a drone camera, so we filmed some of the area from, uh, from up high. So you get a sense of what that area looks like. The fire burned so strongly that it just burned away the topsoil. So to this day, there's a lot of, uh, well, there's a, an avlar underneath the ground there. So a, I think it's limestone. And uh, 
you can still see that. And I also took some footage from uh, an actual fire. This is, of course, not footage of the Great Fire of 1870, but a fire that burned in northern Ontario. And I threw that into the video. So I am now going to share my screen, hopefully, and uh, play you this tune and stop talking so much. Uh, let me see here. It'll just take me a second to figure out what I'm doing. Nope. That's not the right one. Nope. Try that again. <laughs> okay, great fire. Stop share. Hold on, hold on. Sorry about that. It's always the first time I do this, and I haven't done it for a while. I promise I'll get better at this. All right. There we go. I'm going to start the song now. The Great Fire of 1870. Well, I was playing in the gully with my little sister Mary when we heard church bells ringing on the summer breeze. And then my daddy came a running, he said, Son, there's a big fire coming. Then he put his hands on my shoulders and he said to me, You take yourselves down to the river, and in its water you hide, and I pray it will deliver you from the great fire. So take your sister to the land and let there be an understanding. There's no time for explanations or goodbyes. I'm going back to the house now. I got some food and I'll grab the old sow. And as I turned to run, he said one last time. You take yourselves down to the river And in its water you hide And I pray it will deliver you From the great fire I heard it was ten miles wide Was nothing gonna stop it And the winds blew high I could no one out run it with my father's words ringing in my ears as we ran down to the river with a fire on our heels. The great fire took my father, he never made it to the water, and I still see him running through the hay. And every Sunday morning, near the place where he was born, we kneel 
live down in the burnt lands and hear him say, You take yourselves down to the river, and in its water you hide, and I pray it will deliver you from the great fire. You take yourselves down to the river. And in its water you hide And I pray it will deliver you From the great fire Yeah, the great fire. Maybe my moderators, could, my moderators could tell me, is that sounding okay? Is the volume all right? Yeah, all good. Sounds good. Good, good. All righty, good. Yeah, so next time you're driving out to Almont and you go past the burnt lands, you can remember those stories. All right, from one tragedy to the next, as my wife likes to say. <laughs> I, I do have some non-tragic songs, but for whatever reason, that's how this set list ended up being. Um, I think this might have been the the second tune that I wrote along this theme. And this one also has a, a video. And I know some of you history folk know the story of the Heron Road Bridge. But for those of you that don't, we have a bridge in Ottawa. If you're going down Baseline and you drive you're heading east and you go over that bridge where baseline becomes, oh, what does it become? I don't know, something. <laughs> On your left, you see the Ukrainian church. You are then driving on the Heron Road Bridge. And uh, 1966, there were a couple hundred men that were working on that project. And uh, mostly due to faulty construction, the bridge collapsed and nine men lost their lives that day. In fact, I've had the experience of playing this song for a live audience and had people that were old enough back then come up to me after and say, you know, one guy came up to me at a show and he showed me his wrist and there was a big scar in his wrist and he said, that's a piece of rebar. Went right through my wrist there. I still have that scar. And uh, it was a horrible accident because there was all this wet concrete and rebar. And when it, the bridge collapsed, it was five stories down. And these these poor guys fell five stories, were buried in concrete. Some were impaled. My wife always says I should give a trigger warning for this song. And perhaps I should. Um, but it is by far Ottawa's greatest kind of construction disaster. And I was lucky enough to be given a whole bunch of photos that I did make into a video. Um, and uh, I'm going to use that. Hopefully I'll be a little quicker this time to play this video. And I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to get good at this, I promise you. All right, this is called the Heron Road Bridge Song. Well, I was just a young man in 1966 when i quit my job pumping gas to work on the heron road bridge all that summer i worked so hard giving all i could give working on the heron road 
hauling rebar, pouring concrete, sweating through the summer of an auto heat, working for the whistle when the day was done, when no one knew what was to come. All that summer I worked so hard, giving all I could give. Working on the Heron Road Bridge And then one cloudy day in August Where that bridge began to shake And it all fell down with a jet plane sound And people thought it was an earthquake Seventy men fell five stories With no time to scream the pain Me, I was buried up to my neck And swimming in a cement rain Many men fought to set me free As the ground right round my head when they finally cut me out, I felt like I had risen from the dead. All that summer we worked so hard, and we gave all we could give. But I never thought we'd give our lives, working on the heaven road bridge, working on the heaven. When nine men died on that day, you working on a heaven road bridge. Sometimes it feels like I never got away from working on that damn bridge. Well, I've been a lot of places in this world. Sometimes I lived on the edge. But when I go driving in my car, I won't drive on the Heron Road Bridge. I won't drive on the Heron Road Bridge. There you go. The Heron Road Bridge, 1966. I guess the next one is not a tragedy song, so I can start to liven you up. <laughs> um, and this one has a video too, most of which I think comes from uh, bits and pieces of a video I found by, uh, what is it, the Canadian Encyclopedia people made a, a video. I am half franco ontarian Ma mère était un franco ontarien et puis moi je parle un peu de français. Et euh, moi, j'ai appris mon français comme adulte. I learned how to speak French as an adult living in Ottawa. And always been interested in the, uh, the history of Franco-Ontarians. Um, and thought, you know, there must be some good stories of that community. So I dig did some digging. And uh, this is a, a new one, actually. I learned the story about La Bataille des Epingles la Chapeau, the Battle of the Hatpins. Uh, again, I know you history buffs know about the Battle of the Hatpins, but most people in Ottawa don't have any idea what I'm talking about when I play this song. Um, in 1912, the Ontario government came up with a, uh, a new regulation that said there was going to be less French in the schools because there was they just thought there was a bit too much French. Um, and they limited, I think, the French to like two hours a day or something. And the Francophone community had never really mobilized around anything in Ontario. And that was kind of the spark that started here in Ottawa at L'Ecole Gig, which the building still is down in the market. I think it's community center now. And uh, it came to the point a few years later where 
the police were sent down to that school to remove some of the, the Francophone teachers from the school. And the community heard this was going to happen. They circled the school, made a barrier. And the women at the time, of course, had these hats with the giant pins that were like knives, big, long knives. And um, they chased the police away with those hat pins. La bataille des épingles à chapeau. And at the time, that was also the year, or in that time, the um, Le Droit, the newspaper Le Droit, was founded. And its banner headline was L'avenir est à ceux qui luttent, which means the future is for those who struggle. And it was very much a struggle, and probably to this day is a struggle for the Francophone community in Ontario. Maybe I'll just translate little bits of the song. So the key players, those women that were removed from the school, they were Les Sœurs de Delage, the Delage sisters. Um, and um, they helped rally the community to protect that school, to keep it a Francophone school. And the rest, uh, the rest of it, I'll let the song speak for itself. Just going to find the video. Make sure I don't play one of my kids' baby videos by accident. Um, okay. Share screen. La bataille des épingles à chapeau. Here we go. Dans l'année 1900, où je n'étais qu'un enfant, qu'on les Anglais ont passé un nouveau règlement. Moins de Français dans nos écoles avec la loi 17. Mais les Anglais ne savaient pas qu'on avait une âme secrète. Avec nos épingles à chapeau, on est fort, on est fort. Avec nos épingles à chapeau, on est fort. Et prêt pour la bataille. Dans les rues de la base ville, les gens se sont rassemblés. Autour de l'école geek, nous étions tous installés. Les serres de l'âge nous ont dit, on n'accepte pas cette loi. Nous sommes notre langue, comme nous sommes notre foi. Avec nos épées et les chevaux, on est fort, on est fort. Avec nos épées et les chevaux, on est fort. Et prêt pour la bataille. La police est arrivée pour prendre le contrôle. Mais les gens de la Belleville, ils ont crié non Avec leurs épées à chevaux, ben serrés dans la main Ils ont chassé la police et ont repris nos demain Avec nos épées à chevaux, on est fort, on est fort Avec nos épées à chapeau, on est fort Bien que la bataille soit finalement gagnée, la guerre n'est pas finie pour notre chère langue française. Je sais que l'avenir est à ceux qui luttent. Vos peines de garde et vos épingles pour la prochaine dispute. Avec nos épingles à chevaux, on est fort, on est fort. Avec nos épingles à chevaux, on est fort. Avec nos épingles à chevaux, on est fort, on est fort. Avec nos épingles à chapeau, on est fort et prêt pour la bataille. On est prêt pour la bataille. 
Sing with me. Louder. So one drawback of a Zoom show. I don't get to hear you sing. <laughs> La Bataille des Epines à Chapeau, which will be on my new album when I said, uh, when uh, Scheherazade said at the beginning, one of the themes was hat pins. She wasn't joking. All right. Um, this next song has gotten me into a lot of trouble for good and bad reasons, as I shall explain. For those of you who grew up in the Ottawa area or Western Quebec, East Ontario, in a similar vintage to me, well, actually anywhere within 20 years, uh, you know, you may have, uh, if you were like me, had a misspent youth and spent some time going to bars and hull. And uh, back when I did that, my kids aren't around. Hopefully they're not listening. Um, the place that we'd all go to was the Chaudière, or the Chaud, as it was known by as Anglos. And uh, that was a big club on the Elmer Road, heading west down the Elmer Road. And back then they weren't quite as strict on, you know, checking the ID and everything. So, and I was a musician from a fairly young age, and I always wanted to go hear the bands and yes, probably misbehave a bit. Um, but the trick was you had to get by the, the people at the door. And the, really, the guy you had to get by was Jerry Barber. He was the bouncer at the door. Big, big guy. Many, many stories about him. It ended up being the, uh, the title of my most recent album, Ode to Jerry Barber, available at paulweaver.ca. Um, anyway, I wrote this song. Well, it started out as a song about my misspent youth. Uh, and um, somehow Jerry pushed his way into the song, and I thought, this is going to become a song about Jerry Barber. Well, I wasn't going to argue with him. So um, I wrote this song about him, and then I made a little video, which is on, on YouTube, the Ode to Jerry Barber. And I put it out, and uh, I hadn't officially recorded it, but the, the video was out, and people started making comments and all of a sudden I, and there was like a thousand comments on the video I couldn't believe it everyone sharing their stories and and then I got this phone call I pick up the phone and, and uh, now Jerry Barber he died 1984 had a heart attack I think while dancing and uh, so I wasn't too worried about Jerry coming after me or anything um, and uh, I got this call and I pick up the phone and I, and, I, and he says, is this Paul Weber? I said, yeah. And he said, I said, who's this? He said, this is Jerry Barber. Went, oh, really? And he said, Jerry Barber Jr. Well, it turns out he had a son. He actually has several sons, all of whom I think are still around. In fact, the Barber family, and you Ottawa history people, you all know this, is a very famous family in the Ottawa Valley because they are descendants uh, on the male side from a black slave from Louisiana. So a lot of people don't know that. And I know you, there's been a, I think Tom, Tom Barber did a, a thing for the Ottawa Historical Society on that. So fascinating family. Jerry is just the one that everybody likes to talk about, the bouncer. Uh, but uh, there are three generations of really interesting people worth checking out. Anyway, back to Jerry Barber Jr. So he said, I saw your video. Uh-oh. Because I, I, Jerry explained that he'd also been a bouncer with his dad. It's a little word. Uh, he said, great video, loved it. So we actually ended up connecting, and he shared the family photos with me. So I had all these photos once again. Somebody wanted to share with me. 
about the shoddy air and Jerry Barber. So once again, I made a little video and uh, always very thankful that they didn't mind my publicly sharing all this, the family stuff. And there's even, I think, a photo or two of me in this one. So, uh, okay, share screen. All right, here we go. The Ode to Jerry Barber. Well, back in the day of the dinosaur, denim and plaid were what we wore. When the bars had closed down in Ontario, all the kids had head down the Elmer Road to a place they call the Shoddy Edge. With the best of the bands and the big cold beers And the bouncer at the door was a giant of a man With a grin on his face and a bat in his hand Hey, the Jerry Barber, won't you let me in? Cause I've been drinking here since I was 16 And I'm here tonight with my new girlfriend So come on, Jerry Barber, please let us in that's the shot here right there. Well, I hear there was a biker. He wouldn't shut his trap. And he broke a whiskey bottle on to Jerry's back. And Jerry, he just chuckled and he let out a roar. Shut the heck up, buddy. And he threw him out the door. Hey, the Jerry Barber, won't you let me in? Because I've been drinking here since I was 16. And I'm here tonight with my new girlfriend So thank you, Jerry Bobber, for letting us in Well, I hear that the choice rumbled up one night There were 20 angry bikers spoiling for a fight They cornered Jerry, got his back to the wall But Jerry, he just smiled and he ran at them all that's a true story. Fish started flying, someone bashed through a door. Jerry swung a broom like it was a claymore. He took a swing at the leader and he knocked him down cold. Then he chased their bike asses down the Elmer Road. Let's go down the Elmer Road, backwards on a motorcycle. I don't recommend that though. So I was feeling nervous with my fake ID Stumbling up the stairs trying to look 18 But Jerry, he just nodded then he turned to me and said Get your ass in there, punk, or you'll miss the second set Well, hey the Jerry Bible, won't you let me in? Cause I've been drinking here since I was 16 and I'm here tonight with my new girlfriend So come on Jerry Bobber, please let us in Well, hey Jerry Bobber, won't you let us in I've been drinking here since I was 16 And I'm here tonight with my new girlfriend So thank you Mr. Bobber for letting us in and we'll never see the likes of you again. No, we won't. You, 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 And that there is what is left of the shot. It's now a hotel over in Elmer. <laughs> I had fun making that video. And again, thank you to uh, Jerry Barber Jr. for sharing all those photos with me and uh, to my older friends at the time for letting me photocopy their ID. I said, I don't think my kids are home tonight. But, you know, I think I'm okay. This isn't going to go on the internet or anything, is it? <laughs> All right, uh, let's do another, we'll do another happy song. 
Well, it's happy and sad, like all good songs. No, I actually don't need my harmonica. Um, but I do need my capo. So I'll, most of the songs I'm playing today, they are on my CD, The Ode to Jerry Barber. There is a, a new CD coming out in 2024 with all kinds of great Ottawa tunes on it. And if you do like Ottawa history, you, know, you should join the Historical Society because they do all kinds of cool stuff like having me on, but even more serious people that, you know, bring history to life. And uh, my buddy Phil Jenkins, another musician, writer who's written many books about Ottawa. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, take the time to join the society and learn about your town and its history. Um, so this next one, what should I say? Um, I wrote this tune about the, the days of the circus in Ottawa. And uh, there were some big circuses that used to come to town. They would pull in at the train station, kind of near where the YMCA is today. I think there was a train station, at least in a certain era. And like the Barnum and Bailey Circus would show up. And they would have train loads of animals. And they would put them in these big cages and drive them through the downtown in these horse-drawn carriages. At one point I read the list of the animals, and it was just unreal. All the different animals can't have been a great experience for the animals. But I did imagine it from the perspective of a young child in Ottawa you know, at a time when Ottawa wasn't known for too much. Having this circus pump its way through your downtown. Um, and uh, thought that that would be a good song. So, and this one also has a video. A lot of these images are not Ottawa ones. Some of them are. They're circus images. Um, and uh, da, da, da. this one's called the Circus Parade. I'll get it up for you. All right. Here we go. Standing on the corner of Bank Street and Queen, waiting for the circus parade. Holding my mother's hand, straining to hear the band, waiting for the circus parade. Well, it was Barnum and Bailey with a big top menagerie. Some waiting for the circus parade. One hundred floats long, each with his own song. I'm waiting for the circus parade. Off in the distance, what's that I hear? The sound of the calliope drawing near. First came the general, the general Tom Thumb, waving his hands at all who had come. And a marching band followed, they were banging out for. And you know, and I know, there's gone. Side saddle experts, lady cavaliers, gentlemen riders, all carrying spears. There were lions on Lion Street, hyenas and bears. So come down to Lansdowne, see the gladiators. Last came the elephants, twelve in a row. Trunk holding tail till the mighty jumbo as big as a building, tall as the trapeze, and the king of the jungle at Bank Street and Queen. Tra la 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 la
it's all passed us by in the blink of an eye. No more waiting for the circus parade. My mother and me, we got nothing to see. No more waiting for the circus parade. Well, it went by so fast. How I wish it would last, last our whole lives long. Well, I'll be right here the same time next year, anticipating. You know I'll be waiting, waiting for the circus parade. La 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 la. There you go, the Circus Parade. I recorded that with a full brass band, which was just so much fun. And if I could afford to have a brass band on all my songs, I would. <laughs> it's, um, uh, it uh, makes for a great, great sound. It's been so great to play for you all tonight. Do I still have time for another song, my uh, moderators? Oh, yes, you do. Okay, or even more, but I figured I <laughs> we wanted to do Q's and A's too. So anyway, I'll play you this next song, a no chanson en français. Uh, this is the first song that I tried to write uh, in the Ottawa series in uh, in French. And uh, how did it come about? I went onto YouTube and started looking up stories and things about Vanier, which used to be called Eastview which used to be called Janeville. And of course, Vanier was its own town for a certain period of time too, and a very unique place, still is in a lot of ways, but in uh, you know the 30s, 40s, 50s, um, when it was called Eastview, it was you know largely a Francophone community, definitely some Anglophones there as well. Different churches for the two communities, of course. Um, and I found this video by this guy, uh, Jean Roulette, and uh, it was all these images of Vigne. I said, it's amazing, you know. Uh, let's have a coffee. So we got together, him and a buddy of his, and they just told me all these stories about growing up in Vigne. Again, all the stuff I did not know. And I could feel the song writing itself in the back of my head. That's when I know I have a good song. Uh, one of the stories they told me was about... Uh, Lord du Jacquartier, the Order of Jacquartier, a secret society founded in Vigne by uh, a, a priest in Vigne, or Curé Barret. Curé Barret was his name. And he founded this secret society that existed for decades to promote the rights of Francophones, to get Francophones elected to office, to get them in the civil service, because at the time they weren't. Um, and uh, so fascinating story about this secret society, Lord de Jacquartier, colloquially known as La Patente by the men. Some men would go out at night. They wouldn't say, I'm going to the order of Jacquartier, because that was a secret, you know. They would say, je m'en vais faire la patente. I don't have to do my thing, you know. And uh, so that, that is in the, the song. And I read a book about Vignet where it was described by the people who lived there as in Milcare, a square mile. And I thought, oh, that's a good, that's a good title, you know, to be born in that square mile. And all those stories that are buried underneath Montreal Road. And uh, so, yeah, this one is called uh, Dans un Milcare. And it has a video courtesy, the images courtesy of Jean Ouellette as well. So I'll just pull it up. And I always have to thank Jean for providing me with all these great images that bring the, the music to life and mean you don't have to just look at me playing, which must get a bit tedious after a while, really, let's face it. Uh, okay, so there we are, sharing the video screen. And uh, you see my little countdown up in the left there, let me make sure I start at the right time. Son père, il avait le dépanne du coin 
That means his father owned the corner store. Chaque jour après l'école, il faisait des livraisons. And every day after school, he did his deliveries. Il est né dans un mille carré. Dans la ville de Eastview, qui maintenant s'appelle Avonier, jamais loin de son petit coin. Il la porte avec lui chaque jour de sa vie. He carries it with him every day of his life. À l'église Notre-Dame, il était baptisé. À l'église Notre-Dame. Quand il l'a mis dans l'eau, il avait crié. Quand il l'a mis dans l'eau, il avait crié. Je suis né dans un mille carré, dans la ville de Eastview, qui maintenant s'appelle la banlieue, jamais loin de mon petit coin. Je la porte avec moi chaque jour de ma vie. Dun 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 dun. On survécu contre vents et marées. On a survécu. Contre vents et marées, sous le chemin Montréal, nos histoires sont cachées. Sous le chemin Montréal, nos histoires sont cachées. L'or du Jacarté, la bête, c'est notre secret. La bataille, pas en fort, oui ensemble, on est fort. Parce qu'on est né dans un mille carré, dans la ville d'Eastview, qui maintenant s'appelle Vonier, jamais loin de notre petit coin, et on la porte avec nous chaque jour de nos vies. On y va. like that anymore <laughs> all right so those are some of my tunes um many more other ones that uh, i'll have to do another show you have to come to that you can always see when i'm playing in ottawa um in fact i think i'm doing a another kind of history thing for what am i doing shahir is that do you know <laughs> it is uh for the um heritage people i think in February at the um, uh, Beechwood Cemetery, indoors, hopefully, in February. Um, so question and answer, Shahrazad, do you have a way you like to do the question and answer to people, T type in stuff, or do I just- Oh, yeah. If they don't? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, if anyone has a question for Paul, you can just type it in to the chat box and I'll see it and ask Paul. Um, I just wanted to ask, I, I think um, telling the stories from history through music and songwriting 
is such an interesting way um, to share history. How did you first get inspired to tell our local history through your songwriting? Yeah, well, um, I think uh, I've been a musician since I was a kid, but it was only a few years ago that I sort of stumbled across the Ottawa theme because you can only write so many love songs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I found it very powerful to write a song about a community that I live in, that I've grown up in since I was a teenager anyway, and um, get this reaction. Like, because there's people in the audience that knew Jerry Barber. There's people mm -hmm. that survived uh, the Heron Road Bridge disaster. There's mm -hmm. somebody in that crowd every time I play, it never ceases. It's like someone's been hired to show up at my shows with a connection to each song. I played the great fire at Irene's pub and uh, Ian Tamblin came up to me and said, uh, who's a local folk musician, you know, well, that explains why I have those big burnt timbers in my old barn. And that is true that they used, they reused a lot of these old railroad, railroad ties that had burned to build barns. Anyway, that has been very powerful experience for me to have those kind of connections. And it's wonder that's wonderful. Um, what do you find most challenging about writing a song about about uh, history? Um, yeah, well, it's always you. You always want to get it right. And, you know, I know that, like, my songs aren't perfectly historically accurate. But I have a new one that is, uh, was really fun to write because I decided I wasn't going to pay that much attention to the history, but kind of go off on a tangent about uh, a buried beer train under Le Breton Flats. When I heard there was a buried beer train, uh, and I know a lot of you are thinking I'm making this up, there is, in fact, we have a beer train that was buried under Le Breton Flats, and it's probably there to this day. And I figured it really it has to be a ghost train if it's still buried underground. And that song, again, just wrote itself. Uh, and some songs do just flow out, and others you really, you know, I do try to get as many of the facts right as I can. Sometimes they're not always known, um, but uh, yeah, it's a challenge uh, to get all the little pieces lined up. And often it's been one uh, like article in the Citizen or something. I've become friends with Bruce Deachman <laughs> <laughs> and a few other people that you know write regularly about Ottawa history, and they always get a kick when they go, "Oh yeah, I wrote the article that he used to write his song about drag queens in Ottawa." Mm -hmm. I think I see some questions coming in on the chat. Oh, am I supposed yes. to read them or are you going to read them? Um, I'll read them. Okay. Uh, so, Louis Ro Roberts um, asks, have you written any recent Ottawa stories? I'm always writing a story. So that most recent one is called The King of Kettle Island. Mm. Again, people are like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> well, folks. This may seem weird, but Ottawa had a Coney Island once upon a time, and it was in the middle of the Ottawa River. And it had a music hall, a boxing ring, it had rides, it had everything. But mm -hmm. it only lasted for a short period of time, run by this guy named uh, uh, Rocco Graziade. And uh, when I heard that story, I thought, oh my God. And you can see that island if you're down at the river house on the Ottawa River and the <laughs> east end and you look out you see there's an island there was an amusement park there so that's the one i'm currently working on that will also be on the new album and david j jeans asked do you have any auto railroad songs oh my god <laughs> christmas train I, yeah I christmas have, train I, yeah okay I have it. <laughs> yeah that's there it uh, is. Another fun song to write, a song about a Christmas train and now my buried beer train. And I, I think I I have another one. I can't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, trains are so much an integral part of the history of this city. And I live right near where the trains used to pass. And there's a video on YouTube of Buster Keaton coming into Ottawa on one of these little uh, pump cars, you know, uh, 1966, I think before the Queensway was built and it shows the uh, there are six tracks wide going down 
where the canal is now to uh, the train station across from the shuttle area, six tracks wide. <laughs> Uh, so it, at, there was a time not that long ago we were a train town and yeah probably more train songs to come it's fantastic oh uh, when's your new album coming out do you know it's always dangerous to put a date to things like that. <laughs> yeah. all my ex-work colleagues will know about projects um yeah 2024 is the closest i'm gonna get uh so We'll see. I, I hope by the, the fall, you know, obviously. Um, and uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, you'll find out or you can sign up for my, my newsletter on my webpage at paulweber.ca where you just put in your email and you can follow my adventures and misadventures with Dave Draves, who owns a recording studio down in Little Italy. We're having fun recording uh, the uh, braiding beer train. That's my buried beer train. And here's the sign that goes with the song. I'm wow of, <laughs> yeah, that was given to me it's it's a real historic artifact because of braiding beer was like molson's in all of eastern north america for many years i'd never heard of it but it was the biggest beer factory and it was right down in the breton flats and for some reason they forgot they buried a train there oh. um, <laughs> to carry the beer underground from the brewery to the warehouse uh and there's some great crazy stories about people seeing that train like you know construction workers and hydro mm. people going down there and seeing it but i think it's all deeply buried now mm. i think i went off topic there i had no idea the beer train existed <laughs> so. any other questions from the audience any other questions anyone Do you have a favorite of your historical songs? Usually the one I'm playing at the time. <laughs> traditional answer, right? Uh, yeah, it's... It's a good answer. They, they, it, like, I'll have nights where I'll play something and I'll... I, I mostly don't play solo. So I, mm -hmm. I have a, a trio, a quartet, and a, a band, a larger band that I will play with depending on the, the show. And... Um, when you add in all of those other people, uh, you know, all kinds of great stuff and uh, sounds can happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the songs are very emotional and I have to almost distance myself a little bit from them because you can't play a song if it gets, if you become overwhelmed yeah. in the middle of it. Um, and, uh, yeah. What else would you like to know? I was born in 1959 in a small <laughs> town in Southern Ontario. Um, Emma Kent um, wants to know if we can listen to your work on Spotify. I'm one of those holdouts. Yeah. From Spotify. Yeah. I, you know, having grown up with Neil Young when he said, boo, Spotify, like you don't make any money there. Um, but it will happen sooner or later for sure. If you want to listen to all the songs, go to Bandcamp, bandcamp.com. They are all there. You can play. I think you get three before they'll start charging you. But even better, you can buy my CD uh, from my website or just send me an email because that's how I fund more recording. Um, and uh, I'll be retired soon and the pension checks aren't going to be big enough. So I got to sell CDs and T-shirts. There's Jerry Barber T-shirts that uh, has artwork done by a local Vietnamese artist. Um, and uh, they're quite, quite nice to look at. So that's another way I fund things. That's amazing. And Lynn Armstrong wants to know about some songs that we didn't have time to get to. Mm. Well, may, very briefly, I'll look at in the back of my CD here. Um, yeah, I have, like I say, a lot of current day songs, Murray Street Christmas. Uh, my years working as an outreach worker in the market sort of led to that song. Um, living in a rooming house. I used to visit rooming houses quite a lot when I was an outreach worker. Three Years on the Rideau Canal, based on my reading of Three Years in Canada by John McTaggart. Is that right, John McTaggart? Uh, who wrote about building the Rideau Canal. Fascinating story. 
I wrote a song called The Ottawa Lament because you go across this country and everybody whines about Ottawa. <laughs> they're not whining about our poor little town. They're, they're whining about the federal government. Um, so I wrote a song about that and I did a video with a friend of mine on the song that's on YouTube too. And uh, The Christmas Train and I have a song called Mansplainer that all the women would appreciate. And uh, yeah, lots more. Those are a few of them. That's fantastic. So I think that's good for tonight. Great. Uh, we have a lot of people here in the chat saying that they loved your performance and um, that they enjoy coming to your shows. Oh, that's great. And tonight was fantastic. Yeah, maybe I'll have to go back to doing like an occasional online one, you know, after COVID, yeah. lots of musicians were kind of like, I shouldn't say after COVID, but after the worst yeah. days of COVID, yeah. we were tired of playing online because it doesn't have the same spark. But the reality is there's a lot of people that aren't going to go to that little club on Bank Street to hear you play. And, you know, you have friends all over the world and they'd like to hear you play. So yeah. I'm thinking I'll start maybe like once a month, do a little show like this. That'd be fun. That would be fantastic. I'm sure a lot of us really enjoyed getting to uh, enjoy your performance at home. So thank, thank you. you so much, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.